Hi, and welcome to another episode of Productive Emacs. Um, today, I want to cover Closure Refactor. Um, it's a very cool add-on for the Closure mode uh, that allows refactoring of your Closure code. Um, if, you're if you're coming from Java, C Sharp, or any uh, language that has a very good IDE uh, system, you will probably have been relying on uh, refactoring functionality to clean up your code and move things around and make sure that when you rename something, you rename all the um, uh, symbols, etc. cetera. Um, for Clojure within Emacs, Clojure Refactor actually does this. So let's first take a look at how to install it. If we open up the Emacs file, uh, Clojure Refactor, Clojure Refactor. Uh, there we go. Um, you can just use the use package because it's part of the Elpa uh, and Melpa repositories. Um, there are some things that I did. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's still needed, but uh, I hook it up to the closure mode hook. So whenever a closure mode file is loaded, it will enable the closure refactor uh, mode. Um, I explicitly set a key binding control C control M, which is the same as control C enter. Um, and then the, 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 the key bindings for the uh, mode uh, kick in. And I set the closure warn on eval to nil. And that means that whenever the closure refactor mode will uh, want to evaluate some code, it will not keep asking, are you really sure you want to do this because it can be dangerous, etc. cetera. Um, uh, the first couple of times you, you want to get used to it. Afterwards, it becomes pain in the ass, so you can turn it off. Uh, and I have this control C apostrophe um, key binding uh, that I use for Hydra. So let's take a look. If we do the control C apostrophe, it uh, lists the, um, uh, it, it brings up the Hydra for closure mode, uh, closure refactor mode. Uh, so you can say uh, C apostrophe, uh, N for namespace related uh, things, and then can do AI for uh, add import. Really useful if you don't know uh, the key binding so well. So let's do the Q for quit. And let's get to refactoring some code. This is an empty project. All I did was lane new uh, closure refactor demo. So it is a um, barren thing. If we look at the project CLJ, it is the default. So let's uh, go back in a refactored code and um, let's add some stuff to our project. Well, first we want to add some libraries. Um, let's uh, add to the project. Um, com tau enso dot timber. That's a logging library. Uh, which version do we want? We want the latest. So let's go all the way down. We don't want the snapshot 474. We go there. Uh, let me increase the font a little bit and let's open up a window that you can see my key bindings. All right. So I added uh, Timber and in the REPL here you see that, uh, oh, there we go that it actually added it, et cetera. So it, it shows you quite some information. Uh, so now let's add uh, another um, uh, com.stuart Sierra component. Also here we want to lay this, so we go all the way down, 031, and it will add it. Um, so what did it do now? If we look at the project, uh, project CLJ, you see that it actually added the libraries and it added it to the running REPL. So there's no need to stop uh, lane and then go back. So it's very good to uh, stay focused and stay uh, busy. So uh, now we want to actually use um, uh, Timber. So let's uh, add a require. 
uh, and uh, we will do the Tau, I believe it's Tau Enso, yes, Tau Enso, uh, Timber, and we'll call it Log, because I like Log instead of Timber, uh, and I will refer Info, and it will drop me back to where we were, but the, the, I was at line 3, so that's fine. Um, so let's let's add a log message uh, info this is a message and evaluate it and we see in the uh, REPL that it actually has a very nicely formatted log message etc all right so now we have a log statement uh, but um, we, we referred it and if you have a lot of reference or you, you, you uh, it can get quite messy. You, you might wonder where did it come from, especially if multiple namespaces have the same uh, variable names. So in the namespace, uh, if we go and uh, we put our point on the namespace name, we can do the key binding and then stop refer. Uh, and it will actually undo the refer and add the namespace to each uh, it's function that is being used. So now it's log slash info. Um, if you wonder about key bindings, you can find them right here in the command log. So it was stop refer. And now the uh, uh, entry is well unreferred. So that's fine. Um, if we remove this one now and save it, we have a namespace in use that we don't actually use anymore we can actually tell it to clean the namespace and it removes all the un, unused uh, namespaces. So let's suppose you um, uh, have some code right like this, uh, this and uh, that. Um, the string is actually a um, uh, built in library, but it's actually missing uh, if th this does not work, right? It will throw an uh, exception. Uh, for known uh, libraries, you can say add the missing lib spec and it will uh, say, well, I found some things that do joins, uh, a cider, a closure set and a closure string. Well, a closure string is what we want. And now we can actually use the uh, function. So that's also a very good uh, feature to uh, use. Uh, again, let's clean up the namespace. There we go. Um, let's suppose we have something, uh, something, right? we print something to the buffer, um, but suppose this something is a, a thing that you want to reuse, um, uh, you probably want to um, have that somewhere on the top of your file in the dev, so we can say extract extract dev extract dev there we go uh, and give it a name uh, uh, string uh, uh, data and now it will remove the the symbol at the point or the entire expression at the point and move it into its own def right here same goes for uh, extract constant uh, data and then it will uh, create a def with a const uh, metadata very useful and it allows you to take repetitive strings or piece of code and put it in its own dev. Um, all right. Now let's uh, let's create a um, quick function. Uh, let's. I have it in my buffer here already. So we have this uh, this function. It actually uh, compiles. Uh, it has um, some parameters, and then oh, uh, it uh, takes uh, some uh, a key from the parameter, puts it in data, and prints data. So if we want to call this, we do something um, uh, key uh, string, and it will print string. All right. So there's, uh, there's certain things that we can do right here. Um, this is very common and uh, when you're writing your code, it is um, well exactly what you want, but it can be uh, done neater and uh, we can actually do stuff with this. Uh, let's see. So let's start with, uh, we can do the extract function key and say this is print this. Um, and now 
a function is inserted using the uh, same argument list and the form that we had selected is now put into this uh, new function so let's uh, undo now uh, suppose that this is the entire function the, the key uh, thing is not entirely uh, this let is, is quite useless so we could actually say uh, inline symbol and it will remove the let and put the key into the print statement so now we have this um, key attribute uh, or key lookup in param um, there's a better way to do this that is through the um, uh, destructuring of the parameter itself so if we are on the parameter we can say the raw prefix and destructure key uh, and then it will look into the code and see oh these keys are uh, retrieved from the structure so let's just say keys key and now uh, the code becomes even more concise because we can say entry and we can go all the way down to uh, print and say inline symbol again and then we have exactly the same code but it's very idiomatic uh, to the closure world so it's a very powerful concept of the um, um, refactoring part so let's move uh, that around um, uh, we have some more things I'm looking at my notes yeah so um, let's suppose we have this this key uh, data again um, sometimes you're you're, uh, you're writing code and then you have some uh, data that you have and then you want to say you think oh we, I should create a let for this and so if we stand right here we can introduce a let and uh, we say key data uh, and now um, we have this um, the value of key data is now in key data and we have introduced our let um, and suppose well let's say uh, we want to print it because that's what i've been doing with all the things <laughs> so and uh, we also have um, something else uh, value uh, from data uh, we don't need that so now this would be better off and more idiomatic if we put it in a let so let's move it to the let and say uh, value uh, data and uh, without having to cut and paste we we can move data around into and out of a let um, but now that we have this um, we think ah it was not really necessary to have a let so we can say remove let and it will inline all the symbols uh, into the print statement again so you see that from a very by using the simple keystrokes we can uh, actually um, move the code around into how we or how to how we like to do it well, I also added component because component is a very used um, uh, library for uh, um, building larger systems uh, one of the things it has is uh, called the life cycle and allows you to start and stop components so um, uh, how that works you create a dev record you say my uh, component uh, component uh, should really learn how to type so if you say component slash life cycle um, we should add the missing lip spec again uh, as well um, but this lifecycle actually has some functions associated with it so we can say add stop oh, we should be on the uh, add stop and it will actually go and look at the protocol and then add the functions uh, based on that so now all we need to do is uh, do this uh, go forward and this and we have our life cycle basic implementation last one uh, in case it was not powerful enough yet so there, there's a lot of uh, possibilities and, um, and sometimes you want to move stuff around so you think well this should be in its own namespace so we could say something um, i already created 
I should say, another file called other.clj. And I can say, uh, well, this move function uh, to other. And uh, what it will do, I didn't need a new line. What it will do, it will require the other namespace and it will refer something. So um, now I'm curious if uh, we would do stop referring and then it will prefix the entire namespace. So there you see the referring being very useful. Um, well, that's, that's, that's it really. There's more uh, functionalities. Most of them um, are moving into closure mode and cider uh, themselves. Uh, closure refactor has very powerful things as you've seen. Uh, it allows you to move around the code and allows you to restructure it. So if you do closure programming in Emacs, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, that, uh, I'll wrap up with that. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, share this video in your community, uh, co uh, comments uh, below, it is greatly appreciated. Uh, and most importantly, if you like the videos on Emacs and Clojure, subscribe to my channel and uh, it will keep you posted whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching.